Roughly speaking, as humans, our DNA is extremely similar to each other. There are places where there are differences. Some of those have consequences. They might make people taller or shorter or change their eye colors. Or in some cases, some of those changes in our DNA code make people more likely to get, say, heart disease or, or maybe one of the cancers. There's been an enormous change over the last five or 10 years or so in our ability to read genetic information from people, to, to study the changes in their DNA and to link that to outcomes, in, in our case, to, to working out which variants make some people more likely to get heart disease, others more likely to get diabetes or schizophrenia or arthritis. We're extraordinarily lucky in terms of the caliber of the early career scientists we have in the center. We recruit them and attract them from all over the world. Uh, and it's fantastic to see them get together and, and think about the vision needed and the key ideas needed to solve some of the major problems that we have. My work uses genetics to try and understand more about different sorts of diseases that are involved in the immune response. So one in particular is patients that aren't able to uh, respond to infections like the rest of the population. So we're looking at their genetics to see whether they have any differences compared to other healthy people. We take blood from both patients and healthy individuals and we use this blood in order to extract the DNA to then use for sequencing. We're comparing technologies like the, the ones we, that were used for the whole human genome project, which took about 10 years, $3 billion and three continents worth of labs. One of these new machines can generate a whole human genome worth of data within a day for just a few thousand pounds. It's a very powerful technology and it's, it's allowing us to open a lot of doors and ask many more questions than necessarily giving answers. Some of the things that we look at are extremely subtle. For example, mutation in a gene can increase the risk for somebody getting a particular condition by such a small amount that if you have only 100 patients, there is no way to detect it. So you need thousands and thousands of individuals to pick up these subtle differences. And no one organization will generally have the resources to achieve that kind of scale. So now we, for example, for schizophrenia, the community as a whole, I think, has hundreds of thousands of samples and uh, patients to look at. So that really increases the power to make, uh, to make inroads in these areas. I work in the Division of Structural Biology and we're concerned with determining the atomic structure of biological molecules and, in this case, proteins. Determining the structure of, of these molecules allows us to understand their function and structure and function are um, fundamentally related. So being able to see them in exquisite detail um, allows us to understand their shape, understand how they might fit and bind to other molecules and how they might perform uh, the functions they perform in cells and in viruses, for example. The genetics of cancer is extremely important in helping to determine what drugs are going to be effective and how we can help prevent or predict a patient's response to those drugs. So at the present time when we, um, we assess a patient's cancer, we, we take biopsies from the cancer and we're currently just starting to assess the mutation status of one gene that allows us to determine whether or not that patient will benefit from a particular drug. Now we're doing this on a very limited scale with just one gene at the present time, but I hope that in the future we'll be able to look at every mutation that a patient has and determine which treatments are going to work best for an individual patient. It's a very exciting place to be, particularly as a PhD student, because there are so many different people that you can talk to about different aspects of your project. It's very exciting, and you know the, the expectations that is that the more we understand, the more we can do about things. Um, so the fact that we cannot intervene on some mutations now doesn't mean that we won't be able to do it in, uh, in 10 years' time. The brilliant thing is people come from a variety of different backgrounds, from a variety of different places around the world, so it makes for a very stimulating atmosphere and uh, yeah, it's a great place to work. We're passionate about taking advantage of the discoveries we have in the basic science to change medicine, to, to improve healthcare for individuals, to improve clinical medicine through our increased understanding of genetics and through the power that genetic approaches give us.